What's up, folks? We are officially live. What's up? Welcome. I am Brian Jester, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy. Welcome. It's my first solo stream, so if there are any technical difficulties, please let me know. Hope everyone can hear me just fine. Uh, if you're watching this live, in that chat box there on Twitch, um, pop in there and let me know if you can hear me just okay. That way, uh, that way I know we're we're doing things right here. Uh, Moose is uh, Moose is out of commission, so I'm stuck doing the technical stuff today too. Uh, hopefully this shit works. So, uh, so first of all, welcome. Uh, if you're not already, please be sure you you hit that follow button and you're following us to be notified anytime we go live uh, here on Twitch. Hopefully now that I am doing this full time, should be a lot more daytime streams, uh, NBA, NHL, MLB, uh, maybe some more NFL stuff too. So if you guys like this type of stuff, definitely follow us. Definitely let me know. Uh, so what the plan is today, we're going to use the Occupy tools, talk about how to build some profitable NHL DFS lineups. And uh, we've had a lot of people uh, reach out to us about this. We've had a lot of people ask us about the daily plug. And we know the daily plug is, is no longer in existence for NHL. We apologize for that. Uh, but hopefully these types of videos will help you um, and show you how to use the NHL model to create these lineups. So. Um, let me go ahead and pop in this chat real quick, make sure everyone can hear me. And if you have questions, hit that chat box at any single time. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to use, first of all, we're going to talk about the Occupy model just a little bit and show how it works, um, show what some of the columns mean. Then we'll talk about some, some advanced stats behind the scenes uh, that go into it that you can look at. Uh, through other websites that the model incorporates. Uh, and then we'll talk about some satellite strategy and uh, some contest selection strategy, uh, primarily for FanDuel because that's where the biggest benefits uh, come from for NHL DFS. Uh, but we can talk about some DraftKings too if people have questions. So um, so like I said, any initial questions, go ahead and hit them in the chat box. I'll answer them here at any time. Uh, let's talk about the NHL, NHL model really quickly. I see a bunch of people in here already that are familiar. Uh, Nick has, has been a member for a long time. Nick, what's up, man? I see you in the chat, and I know you're pretty familiar with the model. Um, so, so just bear with us here. So, if you're if you're looking at this page now, this is the NHL Occupy model. It's, it, when you first open it, it opens on the center dashboard. As you can see here, we have centers, wingers, defensemen, goalies. Those are your four primary positions that you'll be filling in NHL DFS, and we have a tab uh, for each position. And then. First of all, there's a lot of similarities between NHL DFS and MLB DFS. Stacking, uh, the way the correlation hits, um, lineup construction in general, the the correlation or the the similarities between your pitchers and your goalies. If you play MLB DFS and you like that and you're profitable, you'll like NHL too, which is the big reason I was drawn to it. I had never uh, played NHL DFS up until about three years ago when our co-founder Wally got me on board. But I loved MLB, and it was a very natural transition. Now, if you're like me, you still probably can't pronounce 99% of the names unless you watch the games. Um, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I I'll definitely uh, trip up on some names here as we talk through some guys. But um, the correlation and the similarities to MLB make it a very easy sport to jump into, um, even if you don't know much about the players or even how hockey's played, to be honest. So, um, so with that similarity to MLB, we do have these even strength stacks and these power play stacks. Uh, and so let's just talk about hockey just really quickly. I know some, some guys in here have, and some girls who have, um, who, who watch hockey, know about hockey, but if you don't know anything about hockey, um, let me just talk to you really quickly. So basically what there are, um, there are gonna be five skaters on the ice at all times. And what these teams do, they'll have um, a team, uh, or they have lines of three forwards, and forwards are considered centers and wingers. So they'll have a center and two wingers on each outside, and then they have pairs of defensemen. So as you'll see here, just this is a very, very uh, simple example. So you'll see Nathan McKinnon of the Colorado Avalanche. He is the first line center, and if we go over to the wingers tab, and let's just, I'm just gonna uh, filter just the Colorado skaters. Um, you'll see Gabriel Landeskog. Uh, Rantanen, again, no idea how to pronounce these names. Um, they're also on line one with uh, with McKinnon. So anytime McKinnon's on the ice, generally 99% of the time, uh, these other two line one forwards are going to be on the on the ice uh, with McKinnon. So 
McKinnon, Landis Gall, Renton will, will be on the ice. They'll go for a minute or so. Next line will come on. And then it's, it's a mass subs. These three guys will come off. However, with defensemen, it's a little different. Just because a defenseman is on quote-unquote line one doesn't mean uh, that he's going to be always on the ice with, uh, with the line one forwards. So even though guys like Eric Johnson, Samuel Girard are line one, they'll get a lot of time on the ice because they rotate so frequently. There's only three pairs of defensemen. They'll rotate, rotate, rotate. Uh, a lot of times they will share the ice with, uh, with the different linemen. Uh, the forwards. So, um, so yeah, just not a direct correlation. If you see defensemen, it's not these groups of five guys all on all on one line. It's the forwards are separate, centers and wingers, and defensemen are separate. So, just a slight difference. When I first started playing NHL DFS, I had no freaking idea. I was like, just assume that all five guys were being rotated at once. It's not the case. You have lines of three forwards, and you have pairs of defensemen, um, and that's how these two groups rotate per team. Um, so that's where you get your even strength stacks. That's the the guys who play on the same line. That's what that's all uh, built into. Now, power play. Let's just start at the top. I know some people literally have no idea what hockey is, and that's fair. Uh, I was kind of part of that group a, a few years ago. Um, if a team commits a penalty, um, what happens is, I mean, this is a, this is a crazy thought in any other sport, uh, but they, that guy who committed the penalty has to come off the ice, and the other team is on a power play, so they have a man advantage. That means they have five guys versus four, generally unless there's another penalty. Um, and... As you can imagine, teams score pretty frequently. A lot more frequently when it's five on four than when it's five on five. That makes total sense, right? So um, that's where you can you can get a lot of opportunities. And so uh, and what teams do, let's say there's a penalty, the power play is about to start, they can switch out whoever they want. So they have two groups of power plays. They'll have their first unit power play, They'll come on, um, they'll go for a minute or so. If they don't score, uh, then those five guys will come out and then the, the, the second unit power play will come in. Uh, so you'll have two groups of power plays um, and uh, those are two, two different groups of five guys and that's massive correlation of guys playing the same power play unit. Now, they're only gonna get a couple opportunities per game on this power play, but because scoring chances are increased, uh, you really wanna try to maximize uh, pairing guys up who play on uh, on the same power play unit. See, Al just joined the chat. What's up, Al? Twitch Prime subscriber. Thanks again for that, as always. Um, if you guys are just joining us, see a couple of just joining. We're just kind of going through really quickly high-level stuff on NHL, how the game works, um, how lines work, how our power plays work. Uh, if you're familiar with this, uh, just hold tight for a few minutes. We're going to get everybody here caught up to speed. Um, so, yeah, so we have the even strength, and then we have the power play stacks. So what that means is, let's just click it really quickly. And we'll see, just for instance, today, Boston is ranked as the number one power play unit. The, their, number, their number one power play unit is the number one overall power play unit. Um, so you, try, you normally want to try to get f the five guys who are playing on that power play unit uh, in your lineup. So, so we have even strength correlation, guys who play on the same line, sometimes some defensemen who, who pair up with them. Uh, and then we have power play correlation, completely separate. Now, the ultimate correlation comes, and this is where you get the maximum upside, is if you have guys who play on the same line and they play on the same power play unit. So we just looked at Colorado. Um, uh, Nathan McKinnon, first unit or first line, first power play unit. And then his two buddies, his wingers, on the same line are also on the same power play unit. It is no surprise that... Uh, that I'm sorry, let me uh, pull up Colorado here. These two guys. No surprise that Colorado has a high number uh, of correlated goals with these three guys. These three guys, I think, led the league last year in correlated goals. It's no surprise. They're high scorers, um, and, and they play on the same power play unit. Um, so Nick has a quick question. I don't see Chicago players or stacks in the model. That's fantastic. Um, certainly a glitch. I know they do play in the late game, uh, but I think I know what the issue is here. So I'll make sure that gets corrected before um, before the game starts. So, so hold tight there. Um, so speaking of correlation, just to make sure everyone knows in hockey, you know, in basketball, you have an assist. I dish it out. Guy makes a shot. I get the assist. However, in hockey, uh, there can be up to two assists awarded. If I pass it to a guy, he passes to a guy, and that guy scores, the first guy gets the assist, the second guy gets the assist, the last guy gets the goal. So you can imagine the correlation involved when you have guys playing on the ice at the same time and there's two assists and a goal, 
you're, you're, you can shoot up the leaderboards when you have stacks. It's a big reason why I, I, uh, I prefer here at Occupy. We prefer um, stacking as much as you can at hockey because the correlation is even that much greater than it is in MLB. So um, any questions, uh, let me know about high-level hockey stuff. If you, if you got that down pat, uh, I think we covered most of this in our free strategy guide on the website. So OccupyFantasy.com, click the, uh, the guide, uh, the NHL strategy guide. Uh, we cover a lot of this stuff, so hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys have that down pat. Okay, uh, let's jump here to the center section. We're gonna be here to about 12:30, maybe 12:45, uh, depending on how many questions we have. And again, if you have questions at any time, jump in the chat. So, uh, let's go through the columns really quickly. The Occupy model. Um, so we talked about the team, obviously their opponent, which even strength line they're on, which power play unit they are on. OF index, uh, if you've been around Occupy at all, you know what OF index is. If you don't know, um, it's our proprietary formula that takes over 50 different metrics, boils it down into one number to rank every player on the slate. So not only does it rank or, or use metrics such as the ones you see here, like Vegas odds and team total rank and whatnot and salaries, it also uses a lot of uh, advanced metrics that we'll talk about here in a second. Now, in hockey, the OF index scale is basically 1 to 10. Um, a little bit different to other sports. Very rarely will you see a guy get up to 10. Um, that's what shows, you know, Nathan McKinnon, 9.3. Uh, Jack Eichel, 9. These guys are really high plays. Basically, uh, 93rd percentile of top plays uh, over the course of the season today. So, uh, just something to keep that, that range in mind. Um, have their salaries, obviously. FanDuel and DraftKings percentage. These are very, very conservative projected ownership percentages. Uh, we've had a few comments here in the past about the ownership percentages not being entirely accurate on a number basis. Really what you want to try to use these numbers for is um, figuring out who the highest owned, uh, highest owned guys will be. Um, so, for instance, we have Tyler Seguin at 11%. He may not end up at 11%, but he, because he's one of the highest owned guys, he will end up being one of the highest owned um, players at the position. Um, we got Patrick in the chat. What's up, Patrick? Any benefits in using a second line or all first lines? Fantastic question. Um, there's a couple benefits to using second lines. So first and foremost, not always are the first lines the best lines uh, for some teams. Uh, there are many teams out there that have a loaded second line, and those are guys you'll want to target. Um, also, a great way or a, gr a great reason you'd want to use second lines is for teams that have a very high team total and today's a very good example and i'll show you um but their first line is just exorbitantly priced and their second line uh can offer a decent amount of upside especially at a cheaper price uh, given the high team total and the situation that they're in actually let's talk about that example really quickly before we go here and I, just, just because you brought it up um, if we look at our even strength stacks today boston uh, comes in as a top stack. Uh, we know they have a pretty high team total. What we can do is, cause, because if you look at their their top line guys, Patrice Bergeron, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7K on DraftKings. Let's go to their wingers. Um, Pasternak and Marsham, also super expensive. But what you can do, you can see guys like Jake DeBrusque, who is on the second line, but also on that first unit power play. So he'll play with these these other two expensive guys on the power play unit, and he's nearly half the price. Same thing goes with um, uh, their their center, uh, Kregi. So, um, all right, we got a a very immediate question from Z Lazy Man. Good good uh, good question. Here. The best value goalie for today. So I'm kind of talking through the slate and NHL DFS in general, but I'll certainly answer your question if, in case you're just popping in and out. So I'm going to go to our goalies tab. Remember, our Occupy model has uh, 50 metrics incorporated, updates live. Um, so this is ranked by OF Index for right now. OF Index, for goalies, just to let everyone in, uh, money line and their win percentage is a big reason, but also, also uh, opponent team total, opponent team total move, and number of shots projected face, especially now that DraftKings has changed their scoring a bit and wins aren't as valuable for goalies. Facing a ton of shots, getting a lot of saves are. So uh, that's uh, that, that definitely means you need to incorporate shots faced 
uh, a little bit more than win percentage, projected win percentage on DraftKings. But yeah, if you're if you're thinking about contest type, you know Yaroslav Halik, who will always be near and dear to me in my heart uh, after he helped me take down a GPP two years ago. He looks to be the safest option on the slate, and I'll tell you why. So, one minus two ten money line has the highest money line in the entire slate by a pretty decent margin, and his win percentage is nearly ten points higher than the next highest goalie. Secondly. The opponent team total has dropped, and it's already the lowest ranked team total on the slate. 14th. There's only 14 teams playing today, 14th. So you have a guy with the highest money line. He ranks in the top three in the model. The opponent team total is moving in the opposite direction, and they have the lowest team total. Uh, he seems to be the number one guy for sure. Uh, we got Villy in the chat. Oh, Villy is actually, I need to get you a VIP badge because you are a uh a long time subscriber in fact maybe one of our very first subscribers ever so what's up uh brian good to see you opinions on edmonton and chicago skaters yeah apparently uh that shit is not showing up in the model so i'll make sure uh to get on that give me one second actually real quickly i'm gonna check one thing yeah so edmonton and chicago play tonight at 8 30 they're on the DraftKings slate but not the fandal slate for whatever reason so um, we'll make sure to get those guys in there pretty shortly for you. Uh, let me take a look. One thing. Yeah, after the stream is over, I'll, I'll make sure to get those guys in the model for you. So, sorry about that. I think this is one of the first split slates of the season where uh, a team is, is playing later than the main slate. So, uh, I think the model got a little confused. Always a little uh, uh, a little learning curve when the season starts back up. So. Um, yeah, as Nick says, uh, Halleck is a cash game lock. Yeah, I think so. He should be the first guy you put into your lineup. So let's talk about this. Um, uh, we get this question very, very often. How do I uh, build lineups for NHL? Where do I start? Who do I start with? Uh, and I see Festival, who is a, a top cheer of the month, a Twitch Prime subscriber. Um, so he's looking to dabble in NHL. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to put this on YouTube after so uh, people can watch the replay. Very simple. It's the same same idea for MLB. Um, I'm I'm sure there are you know very minor scenarios where this won't be the case, but it's an easy rule for me. If you're playing in cash games, you know low risk lineups, head to heads, 50-50s, double ups, small field leagues, whatever it may be. Start with your goalie. Your goalie's guaranteed points. It's how you want to start with your pitchers in, in MLB. You want to start with your goalie. So if you're playing cash games today, start with Yaroslav Halak. Top three play, top two play, really. He's tied with uh, Brayton. Uh, high money line. Start with your goalie, then figure out your skaters. Now, same as MLB. If you're playing a high-risk contest, 100-player leagues, GPP, satellites, start with your skaters. Get your big stack in there first. Try to get a secondary stack in there behind them. Then find a high upside goalie to fit in with them. So that's how I would start. That's how I, I normally do it 99% of the time. Um, it's the safest way to go. So I hope that answers some questions um any other questions while we're going through this as far as how to play lineups uh looking at different stacks and whatnot uh definitely hit us up in the chat so what are some stats we use in the model just to be transparent so obviously we love using vegas uh in, in betting odds and live movements we look at projected shots for different players um there's some puck control metrics that we use uh, Fenwick, Corsi. Um, so be sure to look those up. Uh, I see Donkey Venom, an another great name, Twitch Prime subscriber. What's up? Thanks for joining. Um, but let's look at some some more advanced metrics that in recent years have come to light, and we've incorporated in the model these types of metrics that can really help figure out um, a high percentage, uh, high scoring chance situations. Uh, Nick has a suggestion for the stack page, total cost of the line stack. I really like that idea. Um, I'll add that to my, my CEO list and uh, we'll get that incorporated because I do think that's very helpful. So actually I'm gonna write that down. Got you, got you, Nick. So, um, and Moose actually just texted me and said that uh, Chicago and Edmonton skaters are in the model. So if you guys wanna refresh the model, they'll be in there. Um, the lazy man, Nick Backstrom, good value at 6,100. Let's take a look at the model. 
Remember, uh, OccupyFantasy.com members, uh, membership as low as $2 a week, has access to all of our models for all sports, all of our daily plugs. So you can easily look this information up yourself. Um, oh, yeah, Nick Backstrom, he's a center. Duh. Even I know that. Uh, Backstrom's pretty low, 6,100. We like a lot of other guys ahead of him today. Eric Stahl, uh, Vincent Trocek, who, you know, I love stacking Florida. Trocek's in, in there. Um, Kadri is cheap. Those are the guys we would look to get instead. And yeah, as Billy says, he's not, uh, Backstrom's not as much of a shooter. Really, what you're going to get with him are these big assist games when Washington goes off. And uh, yeah, his, his lack of shot, shot volume is a big reason why he's not ranked in the in the top 10 at his position. So uh, thanks, Billy, for chiming in there. I know Billy, he's a Canadian. I'm 99% sure that's true. If that's not true, please correct me. But uh, Billy's a Canadian, follows the NHL. Um, he can speak to a lot of these players' strengths and weaknesses way better than I can. So, Billy, if I, if I make a, uh, if I misspeak or, or say something wrong, please let me know. Uh, Bowmeister, why is he priced so low and seems to produce constantly? Great question. I, uh, especially on FanDuel, they are very slow to adjust player prices. You can really take advantage of it. There are guys who will be nearly min price for two weeks and getting lots of shot volume. So, be sure to take advantage of that. Um, okay, so let's look at this website, Natural Stat Trick. Looks like it was created in 1990. Doesn't matter. They have great information. And what we can look at, I mean, it's very simple. We look at any other sport, NFL, MLB with stat cast data, NFL with next-gen stats, um, NBA with tracking and, and charting data. The same thing has happened at NHL. And, you know, in the very early years of the Occupy model, uh, you know, the Carolina Hurricanes, their skaters would always show up really highly because they could control the puck and they get a lot of shots, at least, you know, a few years ago. But their shots weren't always high-value shots. And because our, our model valued shots pretty highly, these guys would always show up pretty highly. But as natural stat trick, a lot of other charting metrics show, not all shots are created equal. Obviously, shots that are taken quicker, that are off rebounds, that are closer to the net, are worth a lot more. So by looking at natural stat trick, they have stats for every player, every team, and they classify the different number of shots. So they have scoring chances, which are, uh, uh, you know, closer to the net, off a rebound. But then they have high scoring chances, which means these guys have uh, the highest chance of scoring a goal. Let me show you really quickly here. So you, at the top of Natural Stat Trek, they have players and teams. You can get uh, individual player stats, uh, team stats to find teams in good spots. But remember, the Occupy model incorporates a lot of this type of data. Uh, but if you're looking to do your own research or kind of validate some stuff, look here. At the very bottom, they have a glossary. And this, I'm going to show you one graphic, very simple, but uh, this kind of showcases uh, how shots in hockey mean different things. So success by region. Uh, to kind of orient yourself here a little bit, this area right here is where the, the net is the goal per se um, and then here's the the offensive zone so now any shot taken in the yellow area has a 10 out of 510 shot chance of being a goal so very low uh, if you get in this purplish pink range a little bit better 10 out of 310 but if you get inside this blue range 24 out of 193 shots 24 out of every 193 shots uh, convert to a goal so naturally Shots that are taken here are worth a lot more than shots that are taken out here. Uh, Carolina Hurricanes players from years ago. So um, all this data is quantified now. Every shot is quantified. And if you even read a little bit below, below I would encourage everyone to take a look at this. Um, it, it, it quantifies what a scoring chance is. You know, if a shot is taken quickly, it gets a point. If it's a rebound, it gets another point. If it's taken closer to the goal, it gets another point. High scoring chances are, um, are, are scoring chances that have a score of, of three or higher, which means uh, you can look down here. Just read through this. Uh, I'm not explaining this 100% correctly, so I apologize. But basically, high scoring chances are better than regular shots. And our model, using this type of charting data, uh, finds teams who are facing opponents who give up a lot of high scoring chances and it also identifies skaters who have in the past couple of weeks been getting a lot of high scoring chances um, and those players get bumps in the model those teams get bumps 
in the model. Um, but if you want to do your own research, Natural Stat Trick is a great resource. It's free. I encourage everyone who's interested in hockey to check it out. Any questions about advanced data or or anything? To be honest, like I said, I um, am uh, an NHL novice. I don't watch that much. I just use the model. Uh, Waleed, our co-founder, helped build the model. Moose obviously helped build the model. Looked at what is predictive, what is not. High scoring chances are very predictive of a future fantasy success. And our model weights that accordingly. So I encourage everyone, if you're not a member, uh, those the, those players are ranked uh, by each position, FanDuel and DraftKings, using this type of data. Um, questions. What do you guys want to see next? Uh, well, Nick, as the, uh, a hockey enthusiast, asks, how heavy is Corsi used in the model? Um, I don't want to give away the exact weights, but it is, it is used. You know, ha controlling the puck is pretty important. Um, so yeah, there you go. Definitely used a little bit. So actually here, right here, people may ask what the, what the fuck is Corsi. That's understandable. Um, thankfully this glossary right here, any shot attempt goals, shots on net misses and blocks outside of the shootout. Um, you know, really simple. And then you have, you know, Corsi rates and whatnot. So. Getting those shots, controlling those shots. Uh, Ratatar, what's up, man? I know you were in the chat the other day. Do you have similar types of statistics for basketball? Uh, we do not. I, I know um, a lot of NBA teams do. Uh, there's some information out there on charting. I would actually encourage, I don't have the book here with me, um, but there's an NBA book about charting data. It's really impressive. Um, but no, honestly, we don't have that type of data. Sorry about that. Um, okay, let's go back to the model here. Any questions? If not, I'm going to jump over to FanDuel really quickly because I want to show you guys really the best way to play NHL and why it is the most profitable DFS sport. Any objections? If not, I'm going to jump over there. So this slate starts here in 30 minutes, 31 minutes. I'm looking here now at the satellite section. I'm in the full roster. Scroll down. I'm in the satellites and qualifiers section. You can get tons and tons of tickets for a fraction of the cost over on FanDuel. And I know a lot of people play DraftKings. I mean, hell, I have the DraftKings hoodie on right now. I understand. But FanDuel is where you can get big paydays in hockey um, for just a fraction of your money. Um, I see Love Tristan is in the chat. What's up, Tristan? Uh, he asked about core cash plays. We talked about Halleck earlier in goal. And I think Minnesota skaters are especially cheap on FanDuel. Uh, Boston skaters, those are guys you should be building around in your low-risk lineups. Okay, so on FanDuel, we have the Super Goal. That is a $33 GPP. And as you'll see, I mean, satellites for all prices. If you play any, any games on FanDuel, you play the slate at all, you should be entering this Super Goal satellite. 12 cents. Granted, 600 people, top two get tickets, but you can get a $33 ticket for 12 cents. They have 25 cents. They have 50 cents. Um, and this one especially I like if you're playing football with us as well. Uh, you have the Sunday Million. Uh, oh, Vili has a good question, and I always assume this because I've had it for so long, but many people don't know about this. But you'll see the margin and overlay here on my screen. That's a Roto Grinders extension. Um, it's a free extension. It's the Roto Grinders. Roto Grinders FanDuel tool. Um, and let me see, let me show you a GPP really quickly to show you what it looks like. Um, yeah, even if you click on a GPP, it'll show you the margin, how much first place gets, how much the percentage of the field gets paid. You don't have to do all that, all that calculation yourself. These are a lot of things we talk about in our ultimate guide, our ebook, um, but the Roto Grinders free extension does it all for you. Um, all right, so let's go back to the satellites. So the way this works, you can get a ton of Super Gold tickets. Uh, this one kicks off on the 18th, which is in four days, so not a lot of time to get tickets. However, if you're a small player, a $33 ticket can be a big deal, so you should try to do what you can to get at least one ticket for that contest. Um, that's the, the GPP I won two years ago. I, I grabbed a bunch of tickets for it. I uh, had free entries, so um, I encourage everyone. If you have a little bit bigger bankroll, they have the Super Monster, 
which is a $333 GPP. Um, they have a, a $2, a $5, and a $15 satellite. Uh, again, and if you look at this one, guys, this is why I like FanDuel so much. This slate kicks off in two hours. I mean, in, sorry, in 30 minutes. And this contest, which is a $2 entry for a $300 ticket, $333 ticket, only 75 people. Um, sorry, because my face is in the way. You can't see this, so I'll show it here. 75 out of 200 people. This won't fill half the way. So essentially, you get a 50% discount on this satellite ticket. Um, Donkey Venom talks about playing skaters against his goalie. That is not advisable. Um, I mean, maybe on a small slate, but there's literally no reason to do that. Uh, and stacking against them is negative correlation, obviously. Reduces the upside of your goalie and your skaters. Um, something we would not advise here at Occupy by Fantasy. Um, so, yeah, check out this overlay. It's always the best on FanDuel. DraftKings is pretty sharp. They don't have as much overlay, uh, but they do have a lot more different types of qualifiers and satellites. So certainly look there. Like this one, here's a, a $1 Super Goal satellite uh, about a third of the way full, and it won't fill all the way. With the one below, it's even worse. So you guys should definitely hop in and go over there. Um, this is how a lot of our members have success by getting satellite tickets for a fraction of the cost. Um, so they don't have it yet, but what they normally have is, so they have the monster, which is 333. They have the super goal, which is $7, or sorry, $33. And then they have the crossbar, which is $7. And for all bankroll sizes, you can, you can get close to max earning the crossbar, uh, through these satellites. Um, you know, 10 cent, 5 cent, 25 cent, 50 cent dollar satellites, uh, smaller bankrolls should certainly be targeting the crossbar whenever they come out with those satellites. Um, like I said, DraftKings, not as uh, easy to give away satellite tickets as FanDuel is. But honestly, if you're thinking about playing NHL DFS, this is where you should start. Come over here to FanDuel because they have the 100-player leagues that we talk about literally every place we can. If you're playing high risk on FanDuel, what I like to do, throw some lineups. You know, these are three max. Throw like two or three lineups in a 100-player in a league. Throw those lineups in some satellites. Maybe play some cash games with it. I'm telling you, that's the way to go. It is a proven strategy. It's worked for three years now in NHL since we've been offering advice on it. Um, it doesn't get easier. And you don't have to know about NHL. Just, just stack as much as you can in high risk. Um, start with your goalies in low risk. That's the way to go. Um, all right. So it's 1235. Slate starts in 25 minutes. I'll stick around for like five more minutes if you guys have specific questions about NHL, about today's slate. Um, let me know. Um, Radatar, great question. Anything change about DraftKings bonuses? Uh, if you read our strategy guide, as we say, you know, bonuses are just that. They are bonuses, not something you should really shoot or, or, or alter your lineup for. The scoring has changed pretty dramatically, though, especially for goalies. So uh, be sure to, uh, to read up on that. Um, but yeah, bonuses in general, not something we're really looking to take into account. Uh, I'm actually going to retweet this really quickly. Let some people get in here and ask questions. And let's let's get a rapid fire question session, guys. Yeah, don't chase the goalie bonus. No, no point in doing that. Um all right, uh Florida power play one. Love Tristan. Uh so let me tell you this, Tristan. I love Florida's power play all the time because of the guys, the skaters they put on there. They are the number one number two power play unit today. Let's look at here. Go to Florida. Um, so Trocek's not playing on the number one power play unit, unfortunately. There were times last year and the year before where he was playing on that number one unit, and that made them uh, really nice where you could play two centers, and that kind of differentiates your lineup. Uh, but as you'll see here, so we have Barkov on power play unit one. Let's go to Wingers. And we'll go to Florida. And they have three Wingers on their power play unit. Hoffman, Huberdo, Dadanoff. All these guys rank highly. Um, I mean, you go a center three winger lineup, a little bit differentiating, lots of upside. Uh, Florida's power play unit is always one to target, especially when they're in good spots. Uh, 
Uh, so good questions. Let's keep them coming. Like I said, I'll stick around as long as you guys have questions. You think there's enough lower value to stay on top Boston or Edmonton stack? Yeah, especially at Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota is the doo -doo -doo, number one team total today, 3.65 goals. That team total's increased, the biggest increase on the slate, and they have a lot of cheap guys. So you can fit in Minnesota guys with Boston and Edmonton and have no worries. Um, good question from Patrick. Defenseman strategy. Uh, I like to, 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 to stack up, and Waleed, our co-founder who wrote about it in the strategy guide, we like to stack up defensemen who play on the same power play unit as their centers, centers and defensemen. Um, but worst case, you know, if you're stacking centers and wingers, um, I do like playing one-off or island defense plays. You can go cheap there. You can go expensive. Depends on the rest of your lineup, but centers and wingers are, are I think, the most important. So yeah, so there's a couple questions in the chat about uh, I'm gonna fuck his name up, Sammy Blaise, Blaise, Blay, if he's French and it's silent. Um, but yeah, here's a here's a good example if you're looking for a cheap winger to fit in low risk contest, or if you're stacking St. Louis, um, he's on the second line, but he's on the first unit power play, which means he'll he'll get a, a, some good ice time with St. Louis's top skaters, and he's only 4K on DraftKings, 3,700 on FanDuel. Um, decent team total, middle of the pack, but his price makes him very affordable. So, uh, way to point that out. It's a lazy man, donkey venom. Uh, good eye there for Sammy. Any more questions? Let's, uh, like I said, I'll stick around for a little bit. I got my line in, so we can stick around. Still got to finish up the NFL daily plug. Um, if you guys are uh, not members, OccupyFantasy.com is where you can access this Occupy model. You can access, uh, we have we have five sports of content right now, college football, NFL, MLB, NBA preseason, and NBA regular season when it's around the corner, and, and NHL, of course. So as little as $2 a week, OccupyFantasy.com. And if you're not, please, please, please hit that follow button. Uh, I'm going to try to do a lot more of these daytime streams for everyone. Looks like everyone in here uh, is surprisingly, I guess it, there is a, a federal holiday today, so maybe you're off work, but if you're at work, um, Congrats on, on watching this while you're at work. Well done. Uh, all right, couple minutes. Any final questions? I know we, we ran through this kind of quickly. Plan on doing another video um, just, uh, just to run through the model itself. Oh, that's right. It's Canadian Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to you, Billy. Um, enjoy it with some hockey. Uh, yeah, the Wild have the number one team total. I imagine that is because of the matchup with Ottawa, but their team totals increased. They have the number one team total, lots of cheap skaters. Um, cheap exposure to a high team total is always a great way to go in NHL DFS, especially in low-risk contests. Um, so Love Tristan's asking about Carlson, Backstrom, and Wilson stacking them. Uh, let's take a look here. Yeah, Tom Wilson on line one doesn't share power play time with uh, with uh, with Backstrom and Carlson. Um, the only thing that's a little concerning about Washington today is that team totals drop. They have the biggest team total drop on the slate, so uh, we should be concerned about that. And I think I'm gonna go to the goalies tab really quickly because I do want to look at something. Um, actually, that game in general has just dropped a half goal. Uh, opened at six and a half between Washington and Colorado. It's now down to six. You know, still a high total game, but uh, maybe should should cause us to pause a little bit when considering their skaters for our lineups. Yeah, Zucker is one of those those Minnesota guys that the model likes that is is cheap and, and part of the uh, the Minnesota Wild stack. And as Villy points out, like I said, Villy's a sharp in NHL. If you value, value Corsi, and our model does pretty decently, uh, that top Minnesota line has been very good. Um, think And Donkey Venom, thinking about a decent amount of Senator stacks, which line do you prefer the most? Let's take a look and see what the model thinks. Um, Ottawa line one, 
pretty significant advantage over Ottawa line two. Let me see here. Let's look at the power play really quickly. Ottawa uh, power play unit one, obviously way higher. In fact, Ottawa power play unit two is the worst in the dashboard. Um, so yeah, I would say Ottawa line one. Let's take a look at Ottawa. Yeah, Colin White. I mean, look how cheap he is. Now, now remember, this Minnesota game, not only has Minnesota's team total increased, so has Ottawa's. Um, so that, that game total is up a half a goal. Uh, maybe a good game stack if you're thinking about hockey. Now, there's some correlation there as well. Um, so Colin White's really cheap. Let me see here. Look at the wingers. Yeah, I mean, look at Tyler Ennis. He's 3,900 on DraftKings, 3,200 on FanDuel. Um, love Brady Kachuk. Kachuk? 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 Tukachuk? Again, zero idea how to pronounce names. I need Walid on here to help us pronounce. I need to look these up probably before we go on stream. Um, the most expensive, Ottawa Skater. But you have a positive team total move, a super cheap stack. They can help you fit in uh, a bigger Boston or Edmonton stack or some of these more expensive stacks. So I like that call. Uh, Radatower asks, do we have line versus line stats? I assume you mean like how do guys on line one perform versus guys on line two? Uh, we don't. They're certainly out there, but uh, our model incorporates all the data that you need. Don't want to overload you with information. That's why we have the simple OF index formula. All right, I think that will do it. Um, it sounds like this was uh, pretty well received uh, doing a little midday stream. So if you guys like this, uh, certainly hit that follow button. Let us know. Um, I'm going to try to do more of these. Wasn't sure uh, how many people could get uh, get some time during work to watch these, but clearly you guys are doing it outside of the, the lucky Canadians who are off work today. Uh, but yeah, so follow us on Twitch. Hit that follow button. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at OccupyFantasy. You can follow me at BrianJesterFF. I'll say hi in the chat so you can see my username in case you follow me on Twitter. Uh, remember, this is the same tools that I used to win the million dollars in the NFL GPP back in February. There are no million dollar hockey GPPs, or I would certainly be trying. Uh, but yeah, play on FanDuel. Start with goalies and low risk. Start with stacks and high risk. Pay attention to high danger chances. Again, play on FanDuel with play satellites. <laughs> That's the key to NHL DFS. Um, appreciate everyone listening. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. For the Million Dollar Mission Week 6. Yeah, shit, Week 6 already for NFL, where I review my previous week's 150 lineups. Uh, should be, be sure to check that out. Um, the NFL Daily Plug for tonight's single game slate will be out in about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, Occupy model is up and running for NFL. Uh, and, of course, NBA preseason plug will be out a little bit later today. So thanks, everyone, for listening. Appreciate you. Uh, thanks for bearing with me as we go through my first solo Twitch. Uh, thanks, and we will talk to you soon. Good luck today if you do decide to play.